We assume large corporations have economic objectives, but we don't expect them to have a secret social and occult agenda as well. For example, we don't expect them to engineer arrested development and family breakdown. We don't expect them to use pop culture to foster alienation and dysfunction. Central bankers based in the city of London control the cartels that dominate the world. They finagle the right to print money based on our credit and quite naturally use this advantage to buy control of everything worth having. This might be tolerable if limitless wealth was all they wanted, but they also want limitless power. Not just one world dictatorship, but total control over our minds and souls. In the book, Dope Incorporated, 1992, executive intelligence review researchers unveil the true occult and criminal character of the banker's agenda. Incredible and bizarre as it sounds, the bankers practice the pagan cult of Isis, which is at the heart of Freemasonry, Theosophy and the Kabbalah. Their religion is not the Anglican Christianity they publicly profess, but a hodgepodge of paganism, including satanic cults, such as Theosophy and Rosicrucianism. The central, synergetic ideology of the oligarchy's inner cult life is the revived Egyptian drug cult, the myth of Isis and Osiris, the same anti-Christian cult that ran the Roman Empire. This is why the logos of many major corporations feature occult symbolism. This is why their advertising often contains an overt social message, lately espousing occult feminism. According to EIR, the New Age counterculture that was foisted on the 1960s adolescent youth of America is not merely analogous to the ancient cult of Isis. It is a literal resurrection of the cult. This is why most counterculture symbols, like the peace sign, also have occult anti-Christian origins. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The 35-page chapter of the Aquarian Conspiracy is available online at Anthony Greiger Scott's excellent website. I am merely highlighting the most pertinent points. Consider the following as Cliff's Notes. Popular culture, music, TV, movies, books, fashion etc. is not spontaneous, but corporate controlled and manufactured. EIR compares it with the drug trade in general. Today's mass culture operates like the opium trade. The supply determines the demand. Think of the talentless Ashley Simpson, Paris Hilton, etc. For example, the banker's social engineering branch, the Tavistock Institute, manufactured the Beatles phenomenon. The screaming teenagers were bussed in from a girl's school. In 1963, the Beatles appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. They combined rock and mystical music, long hair, and Hindu worship. Drugs were suggested in many of their songs. Yellow Submarine, a submarine, is a downer. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the initials of the main words, are LSD. Hey Jude, a song about methadrine. Strawberry Fields, where opium is grown to avoid detection, and Norwegian Wood, a British term for marijuana. John Lennon's song, Imagine, attacked religion, Imagine there's no heaven, it's easy if you try, no hell below us, above us only sky. Espoused a do-your-own-thing philosophy, imagine all the people, living for today. Attack nationalism, imagine there's no countries. Attacked religion, it is isn't hard to do, nothing to kill or die for, and no religion too. Called for the abolition of private property, imagine no possessions. It supported a new international order, I wonder if you can, no need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man, imagine all the people, sharing all the world. And advocated a one world government, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one, I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will be as one. Lenin called for abolition of private property, and then left his Japanese-born widow a $250 million estate. In his Brave New World Revisited, 1958, Aldous Huxley, a member of the Banker Brain Trust, described a society in which the first aim of the rulers is, at all costs to keep their subjects from making trouble. He described a likely future. The completely organized society. The abolition of free will by methodical conditioning, the servitude made acceptable by regular doses of chemically induced happiness. He predicted democracies would change their nature. Quaint old forms, elections, parliaments, supreme courts will remain, but the underlying substance will be non-violent totalitarianism. Democracy and freedom will be the theme of every broadcast and editorial, but democracy and freedom in a strictly Pequikian sense. Meanwhile, the ruling oligarchy and its highly trained elite of soldiers, policemen, thought manufacturers and mind manipulators will quietly run the show as they see fit. 
The highly trained elite consists of dupes, many of whom actually believe they are opposing the corporate elite and building a better world. Generally speaking, they are self-righteous mediocrities who sense which path leads to success, like ants and jam. These change agents, communists call them useful idiots, are often feminists, Marxists, Masons, socialists, liberals or naive New Agers. Conspiracy leaders, H.G. Wells and Marilyn Ferguson, mention them in The Open Conspiracy, 1928, and The Aquarian Conspiracy, 1980, respectively. Ferguson writes. There are legions of Aquarian conspirators. They are in corporations, universities and hospitals, on the faculties of public schools, in factories and doctor's offices, in state and federal agencies, on city councils, and in the White House staff, in state legislatures, in volunteer organizations, in virtually all arenas of policy making in the country. They are products of a counterculture that has robbed them of moral or common sense. The counterculture is exactly that. A sophisticated ruse that runs counter to true culture. It is the enemy of Western civilization, which is based on belief in God, in other words, a natural and moral order that includes universal standards of love, truth, beauty and justice. Under the aegis of humanism and secularism, the neo-feudal world order redefines reality and fosters pagan dissipation. It builds museum monuments to human rights, while courts deprive millions of children of access to their fathers. People who uphold the truth aren't suppressed, but rather made to seem irrelevant. In the NWO, defenders of civilized values have a status similar to model railroad enthusiasts. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.